Hello everyone, I'm the Weather Dude. Welcome back. And today we're talking about Hurricane Iota that is developing and developing very quickly. And this is going to be a very dangerous threat to Central America. We're talking at least Category Three, although Category Four seems very, very likely right now. So, to find out more, stay tuned for the whole video and enjoy. If you'd like staying up to date with the latest weather forecasts and updates, then please consider hitting the subscribe button below. Let's see how fast we can get to 2,000 subscribers. Also, to help this video's performance very much, please consider clicking the like button and sharing this video with your friends. Also, please consider watching the whole video. Thank you. Now let's get on with today's video. So again, this is the 4 p.m. major update. If there's any other changes or notable advisories that come out for the National Hurricane Center, I'll definitely leave them in the community post on my channel as well. But as of right now, as of 4 p.m. Eastern, it is a 90 mile hour category one hurricane. But if you look at the National Hurricane Center, pretty soon it's gonna go right up to a cat three. So they're predicting some maybe rapid strengthening uh, over the next day or so. And it's moving west at nine miles an hour right now. No, that will be most likely changing to northwest or most likely west-northwest. Now, the good news as of right now is it doesn't look like it's going to pull in another Ada where it just goes back into the Caribbean, uh, most likely going west into Honduras, maybe El Salvador and Guatemala uh, before uh, dissipating completely. Good news is also is that the terrain in this area is pretty high. So the wind, the wind strength with this storm will deteriorate quickly once it gets on land, but a lot, a lot of rainfall, and that's the bad news. All right, because of that terrain. So uh, you lose one bad thing, and then you get another. So uh, earliest phase of arrival time of those tropical storm force winds. Nicaragua, Honduras, most likely like 8 o'clock in the morning, maybe along the coastline. And then once you head inland, maybe more so later Monday, uh, or through late morning Monday into the afternoon, and Tuesday morning uh, for like El Salvador and Guatemala, and maybe even into Tuesday p.m. as well. Is when those winds could arrive. Now, hurricane force wind probability, because we know <laughs> we know a lot of us are going to see tropical storm force winds. Those hurricane force winds are definitely going to be northeastern corner of Nicaragua, uh, southern Honduras, kind of like pretty much in a similar region where Ada made landfall actually. Um, and where the probabilities for those right now are sitting above uh, forty percent chances in most spots, but that will definitely be going up even higher. So there's your wind field. This is when the storm kind of first developed, and you can see it now. It's much. It's a much wider wind field. All right, and it, it's definitely broader. It definitely expanded, and of course, the red showing the hurricane force wind is now developing because it's a Cat One hurricane. All right, but it could be getting a lot higher than that. And here it is. So according to the National Hurricane Center, this will be a Cat Three by 1 a.m. Eastern um, tomorrow morning, or overnight, 1 a.m. Eastern, with winds gusting to 140 miles per hour. Now look at this, sustained winds go to 140 miles an hour. This is by tomorrow afternoon at 1 p.m. Winds gusting to 165, which is just outrageous, all right? Now the next frame, it does say 120, but keep in mind, it's already been on land. So after this, this right here says 140, so it could do some strengthening between this point and I think that's Bilui, all right? Right there, I think that's in, a, in a Nicaragua, all right? So if it does strengthen between the 140 point and maybe it could get up to 145, Maybe even close to 150. Cat 5 is not projected right now, but you know what? The way this season has been, it's definitely possible. Still retaining tropical storm status, though, but you see it goes all the way down to 40 pretty quickly and it's down to a tropical depression. So the storm will be weakening pretty fast, again, because of that terrain. But keep in mind, the rainfall will still be very dangerous. All right, so Iota is a is expected to continue to rapidly intensify. And again, calling for extreme dangerous Cat 4 right now. Again, this is what's formerly, as you saw in the end of the title, this is formerly what's known as Invest 98L, is what it was before it developed. Um, hurricane conditions are expected. Definitely a lot of surge. We can see over 10 feet, 15 feet, definitely higher than that, most likely, actually. Um, and through Friday morning, definitely a lot of heavy rainfall. So this will be lasting for a pretty long time here. All right, and again, we just had Hurricane Ada in the same exact region. So that's what's going to make it even worse. So here's IOTA on, on, on current storm information, 80 knots of wind right now, according to this, 974 millibars of pressure. Let's actually, oh yeah, and by the way, there is another, hopefully for another video another day, there is actually another area of development right where IOTA is right now, which is really interesting. Uh, National Hurricane Center, they picked up uh, 974, yeah, so same of these two do a line here. And when you look at the satellite imagery, 
Like, I would not be surprised that, like, remember, that advisor was from two and a half hours ago, at least from when I'm recording this. So I definitely think this is at least a category two right now. And the hurricane hunters are, I, the last I checked, they are en route, which means they're on their way to fly into the storm. I'm not sure how much progress they made yet. We're going to be taking a look at that. But significant convection has developed around this eyewall. Like, the beginning of the loop, you barely see any pinks. And then by the end of the loop, there's pinks wrapping around, like, the entire storm. All right, which really does say something like those coldest cloud tops, as you can see by the pinks, all the way down here. All right, so that, uh, even though an eye is, it, I do see it. It does get uh, kind of like wound up at times. Like you can't see the eye at times, but a lot more convection there. And you see surface temperature notably. So this is kind of like where the storm is right now, ish. Like like in this general area, um, going to be staying in some slightly above average waters. Nothing too significantly far above normal, but. Still, any warmer water, warmer than average, definitely does help the storm out. Sea surface temperature is also sitting in the low, probably actually pushing mid 80s, because uh, it is a Southern Caribbean, definitely a lot warmer than Northern Caribbean. And yes, this is a this storm is this is what's allowed it to get its act together. Low dry air, low shear. So let's refresh this. And no, they've actually started flying into the storm. And the first pass that they made, guys, look at this. This is only the first pass they made through the storm. 964 millibars of pressure so i definitely think hopefully you might see in the community post hopefully there's a 7 p.m intermediate advisory because already with their first pass through they, the pressure already dropped 10 millibars and we're seeing some peak flight level winds of about up, upwards of 96 knots but again that's because the hurricane or the airplane is flying a bit higher now that's where this graph comes in let's refresh this actually this is what actually tells you the surface wind on the top right so two instances one about 80, another instance found 83 knots. So uh, this thing is definitely starting to exceed maybe about 100 miles an hour. So if this holds true, um, I definitely think that this will be definitely in the next advisory upgrade to a cat too. Again, that will be in the community post. If they do post something that, yeah, again, peak pressure is found at around 964, maybe even a tad lower than that, as you can see by the red line. And we're going to actually get a check on this uh, uh, towards the end of the video as well. See if maybe if anything changed. So here's where the storm is now, all right, sitting at about 79 west and about 13 degrees north. So it's kind of like your exact coordinates. Here is the storm track for IOTA, all right. And the good thing is, like I said, good, like I said in the last video, good news is that the models are agreeing. The It's bad news, though, for the place that the models agree on, for example, Nicaragua, Honduras. But at least the models are agreeing. We know where this is going to go pretty much, at least in the next couple days, next few days. And all the models, most of them anyway, call for it to go back in the Pacific. Now, what's left of it, that, that doesn't tell us this, but we'll find that out um, in the next couple of maps. But the track does bring in a northern, hot, a northern Nicaragua landfall, which does put the southern portion and eastern portion of Honduras in the, the biggest threat zone, as well as northern Nicaragua. So definitely keep that in mind. DEFS model tracks, as you can see, here's the pressure. All these models are pretty much calling for a drop to around 960. Before landfall, although that's where they're this that's where the storm is sitting right now. 964 is the latest pressure reading. Now that we just got an update from the from the aircraft reconnaissance. So here's the GEPS model tracks. Now they show something a bit different. If you watch my last video towards the end of the couple models here, some I forget which one, but one of them did actually call for it to like skip a Nicaragua landfall and go right for Belize. Well, this is kind of like in between what's happening now and that other scenario. Like, for example, they're not calling for a direct, like, going straight through Nicaragua. They're not calling for it to go straight through Belize City. It's, like, in the middle. They have it going up the coast of Nicaragua, up the coast of Honduras, and then to the Yucatan. So that's a, that's a very interesting track because we haven't quite seen anything like that. All right, so let's now go to the intensity guidance. Um, again, most of these models, like, a good chunk of them, I'd say, like, maybe 88 90%, do make this a Category 3 at some point. Uh, one model, only one, which I'm surprised, makes this a Cat 4, considering what the Hurricane Center is calling for right now. A few do only make it a Cat 2, but most of them do put it in a major hurricane status, which is, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the last thing we need this time of year, definitely. All right, so now we're in the portion of the video. We started getting into the three models, the HWRF, the GFS, as well as the European. So definitely stick around for these models. Um, so here's IOTA, all right? Pressure, at least according to the HWRF, at 8 p.m., they're projecting 955. Uh, at 5 p.m., they were projecting 960. So that's, that's actually pretty accurate, um, considering that it's right now 630 and it's at 964. So that's almost pretty accurate. 
um, but they're calling for very heavy rainfall, right? Very heavy rainfall, as you can see on the western side. This like this isn't just eastern or northeastern loaded. This is like a whole like the west side of the storm, the north, the east, the south, like the whole the whole surroundings of the storm are just loaded with rainfall and strong winds. Um, and you can just see, look at this beast of the storm right there. And remember, look at this. It is still over water. It hasn't really made landfall yet. Well, it, it might have scraped land. No, it had never even touched land yet. So they have it kind of going in, coming in like this, but a weird angle to where it still makes landfall on Honduras and not Nicaragua somehow, which is pretty weird considering how the land is shaped, but it's possible, right? And then either way, though, whether it's a extreme eastern and southern a Honduras landfall or northern Nicaragua landfall, we pretty much have a good idea where it's going to go at this point, pretty much in this general zone. And you can just see the rainfall just lasts. Like, if I were to go, go back to, say, for example, let's say right about here. Like, the rain's already starting for places like Honduras, Nicaragua. This is, like, tomorrow tomorrow evening, like, 5 p.m. on Monday, Eastern Time. Look at this. The rainfall just doesn't let up. It may not be till Friday morning, like, late Thursday into Friday morning, where the rainfall finally let, lets up here. Um... And yes, again, it's because of that terrain, all right? And even when it's onshore, well inland, it's still going to be a tropical storm. It hasn't really hit that extremely mountainous terrain yet. It's still on some more flatter ground. And you can just see the huge band of China, like ginormous rainfall rates. It's just like arcing. I mean, look, look at it, look at this arc of like this band of winds are going right to the north of the storm. It almost looks like a horseshoe, all right? So a very dangerous looking storm system. Uh, they have it peaking out in terms of wind strength. They have it peaking out at... I believe somewhere around a cat th cat three is a hundred knots. I think one twenty knots. So probably a definitely a cat four. All right, pushing cat five status, like nine hundred thirty four millibars of pressure. Um, I would say yeah, this is its strongest point back here. Not even though the pressure is nine forty, you can see the nine thirty four is the lowest pressure reading, strongest winds. They're projecting one hundred and twenty knots, and then there is coming onshore for a landfall. So. What are we looking for in terms of landfall time? Well, landfall time, um, according to HWRF, uh, if it were to make landfall on Nicaragua, I would say maybe, like, we're talking about, like, midnight on Tuesday, somewhere around that time. Now, if it does somehow manage to go north and then go into Honduras instead, that would be more of an 8 a.m. Tuesday landfall. Either way, though, you, should, you guys better be prepared now if you live there. All right, definitely, I mean, you, like, really, honestly, Hopefully, people were staying prepared after Ada. I, I mean, definitely, it's not common for, like, a, a hurricane to come in right after another one, let alone a major hurricane. All right, but look at all this energy. It's tightly wound up. It's waiting to be dispersed. You got the main core energy here, and you got these huge bands. We got two of them, I see. A third smaller band over here. All right, and then coming on shore, and then the energy is still... The energy is still there. We still got that like Central American gyre blends in with. We still got a lot of precipitation. All right, so now we're gonna move on to the GFS and then the European models. So here's the GFS coming in. Now they have it a landfall right around I'd say one to two a.m. on Tuesday. So pretty similar, but they have like what we were talking about, like a a border on northern Nicaragua or on the border between Nicaragua and Honduras. All right, and then moving through. Kind of trying to get back into the Caribbean towards the Yucatan, but then it just drops out. All right, so let's actually take a look at the rainfall for it, because HWF really doesn't have that, but the GFS does. So it's a good time to take a look at some of the uh, precipitation tools with the GFS model. So let's go out, let's say five days or so. I think that's a good bet. Uh, but look at this huge zone. Look at this. We're talking six, we're talking about six to 16 inches of rain plus, like six to 12 plus. For Nicaragua, Honduras, even through the extreme southern portions of, of the Yucatan Peninsula. So how strong do they make the winds? Alright, so this is 8 p.m. and they were projecting winds of 76 knots. Um, and that's at 8 p.m. It's 6.30 and we're finding winds already of 80 knots, at least. Like probably probably like around 85 actually. So now they're projecting a much, much weaker landfall at only not i this is the 12 oh is this the 12z model right yeah so they only have the 12z actually if i were to go out into the western atlantic for some reason now it says 18z all right so we're gonna have to do that because apparently when we zoom out it gives us another model run which is pretty weird all right but there's your but you look at the pressure 
960, and then it goes on short. So they have it a bit of a weaker storm. I definitely say at least a cat, the um, cat two still, maybe borderline cat three. HWF is more so cat four, right, which I do definitely think is more accurate. And finally, final map here, European model. As you can see, look at all that energy that is just wound up in that storm system. All right, there's a lot, a lot of energy. All right, and let's go to the 5,000 feet winds to see. Yes, they're definitely a cat two with the European model. And if we go back to the aircraft reconnaissance, let's give one more refresh. Hopefully, I'll be giving updates on this as well. Um, never really picked up anything new. I mean, they don't fly it like lasers, like 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 they don't fly at the speed of light. All right, so it will take a bit to get data in there. Hopefully, I'll be keeping updates on this in the community tab as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm the Weather Dude. Signing off. Till next time, I will catch you guys in the next video.